posting of transactions in journal and ledger. Young man, as this is your first day on the job, let me brief you on various duties you are supposed to perform. Are you familiar with maintaining accounts? Oh, what's that? Well, I'm sure you are aware that whenever we sell our products to a customer, we are required to record it in the books of accounts. Now, what in the world is books of accounts? What's wrong with the boss? Where does he get these kind of people from? Well, all right. Books of original entry are the books in which the transactions are originally recorded like cash book, journal, purchase book, sales book, bills payable book. Uh, is that so? You must be aware of the various categories of accounts for the purpose of recording a transaction. <laughs> Not at all. Tell me more. All accounts are divided into five categories for the purpose of recording the transactions. They are Asset Liability Capital Expenses and losses and revenues and gains. This is the basics of accounting. Have you ever posted entries in a ledger? Wow, this is cool. The only posting I have done is at the post office. Is it something similar? This is too much. I do not care even if the boss has appointed you. I will certainly not have such an ignorant person working under me. You have absolutely no knowledge of accounts. Nor I'm supposed to have. Just chill. I'm the pizza delivery guy. Accounting Equation From a large multinational corporation to a corner beauty saloon, every business needs to know its own financial position. The financial position of a company is measured by the three components that make up a company's balance sheet. Assets – what a firm owns. Liabilities – what a firm owes to others. Owner's equity – the difference between assets and liabilities. The accounting equation or basic accounting equation offers us a simple way to understand how these three components of a company's balance sheet are related to each other. The accounting equation of a sole proprietorship is assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. The accounting equation for a corporation is assets is equal to liabilities plus Stockholders' Equity Assets An asset is anything of value that a company owns. For example, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid insurance, investments, land, buildings, equipment and goodwill. As it is clear from the accounting equation, the sum total of assets must be equal to the combined amount of liabilities plus the owner's or the stockholder's equity. Liabilities A liability of a firm can be categorized as Firm's Obligations Liability is an obligation of a firm arising from past transactions or events. For example, loans payable, accounts payable, salaries and wages payable, interest payable and income taxes payable. Claims by creditors against the firm's assets. As a source, for example, owners or stockholders equity. If a company maintains the records accurately, the accounting equation will always be in balance, which means the total on the left side of the balance sheet 
would always be equal to the total on the right side of the balance sheet. The reason being, every business transaction affects a minimum of two company accounts. Let us understand this with the help of two examples. A firm borrows money from a bank. Here, bank balance of the firm has increased or assets of the firm have increased. Firm has to repay the money to the bank or liabilities of the firm have increased. A firm purchases inventory for cash. In this case, stock of inventory has increased or assets of the firm have increased. Cash balance of the firm has fallen or assets of the firm have reduced. As observed in the above cases, each transaction affects a minimum of two accounts. Hence, the accounting system is referred to as double entry system of accounting. These journal entries are then posted in a ledger. A ledger is nothing else but a book containing various heads of accounts. All the transactions related to a particular head of account during the entire year are posted in it. Thus, at any given point of time, the net position of an account is known by viewing its ledger account. Each account in the general ledger can either be an asset or a liability or owner's equity or a revenue or an expense or a gain or loss account. Now let us understand the posting in a ledger. Under the double entry system for every debit there is a corresponding credit which means there is a minimum of one account that has been debited and another which has been credited. Thus, every business transaction affects at least two accounts. The posting of the account with debit balance is done on the left side of the ledger account. Similarly, the posting of the account with credit balance is done on the right side of the ledger account. The initial challenge with double entry system of accounting is to know which account should be debited and which account should be credited. Let us understand the posting of a transaction with a few examples. Sumit started business with 50,000 rupees cash. Let us analyze the same. Here, two things have occurred simultaneously. First, cash enters the business. And another, the firm owes the money to Sumit, the proprietor. As cash is a real account, the rule of real account applies. Debit what comes in. Hence, cash account is debited. Sumit, the proprietor, is a personal account. The rule of personal account applies. Credit the giver. Hence, capital account, that is, proprietor's account, is credited. Now, let us understand how this journal entry is posted in the ledger. Journal entry for the same. Cash account debit to capital account 50,000 rupees being the entry for capital introduced in the business. In the given journal entry, cash account has been debited by 50,000 rupees. Hence, entry in the cash account in the ledger has to be on the debit side also in the particulars column details of the corresponding credit account that is capital account is to be mentioned also capital account has been credited by 50,000 rupees hence entry in the capital account in the ledger has to be on the credit side also in the particulars column details of the corresponding debit account that is cash account is to be mentioned. One more example. Sumit purchased goods worth 20,000 rupees from Mr. X on credit. Let us analyze the same. Here, two things have occurred simultaneously. First, goods have entered the business premises. And another, the firm owes the money to Mr. X, the seller. 
goods is a real account. Here, the rule of real account applies. Debit what comes in. Hence, goods account is debited. Mr. X, the seller, is a personal account. Here, the rule of personal account applies. Credit the giver. Hence, Mr. X's account is credited. A point to be noted. As Sumit has not purchased goods against cash, cash account is not affected. Goods account debit to Mr. X's account 20,000 rupees, being the entry for goods purchased from Mr. X on credit. In the given journal entry, goods account has been debited by 20,000 rupees. Hence, entry in the goods ledger has to be on the debit side. Also, in the particulars column, details of the corresponding credit account, that is, Mr. X's account, is to be mentioned. Also, Mr. X's account has been credited by 20,000 rupees. Hence, entry in Mr. X's ledger has to be on the credit side. And in the particulars column, details of the corresponding debit account, that is, goods account, is to be mentioned. One more example dealing with revenue. Received brokerage of 5,000 rupees by check. Let us analyze the same. Here, two things have occurred simultaneously. First, bank balance has increased. And another, the firm receives brokerage. As bank is a real account, the rule of real account applies. Debit what comes in. Hence, bank account is debited. Brokerage is a nominal account. The rule of nominal account applies. Credit all revenues and gains. Hence, brokerage account is credited. Now, let us understand how this journal entry is posted in the ledger. Journal entry for the same. Bank account debit to brokerage account 5000 rupees being the entry for brokerage received by check. In the given journal entry, bank account has been debited by 5000 rupees. Hence, entry in the bank account has to be on the debit side. Also, in the particulars column, details of the corresponding credit account, that is, brokerage, is to be mentioned. Also, brokerage account has been credited by 5000 rupees. Hence, Entry in the brokerage account in ledger has to be on the credit side and in the particulars column, details of the corresponding debit account, that is, bank account, is to be mentioned. To sum up, accounts which have been classified as assets usually show a debit balance. For example, cash, bank, goods, furniture. Accounts which have been classified as liabilities usually show a credit balance. For example, capital, creditors, loans taken. Revenues and gains usually show a credit balance. For example, sales, service revenues, interest revenue or interest income and gain on sale of assets. Expenses and losses usually show a debit balance. For example, salary paid, wages, rent, supplies and interest. Accounting is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. It is essential to record all the entries in the journal, the book of original entry and post them in the ledger. Only on completion of the ledger posting and finalization of accounts can accounting be used to actually communicate information to interested users.